gracious Heavenly Father, I just come into your presence by means of our Lord Jesus Christ and in the Holy Spirit, thankful for the opportunity that you give us to feast upon your word. I thank you, dear Lord, for the peace that you have given us, the peace that surpasses all understanding. I ask that you would filter out all the foolishness, but seal to our hearts that which is truth, for it's in Christ's name I pray. Amen. Hi, this is Steve at BlessedHopeForever.com. We're going to conclude our study in 2 Thessalonians in this video, Lord willing. I'll put up here on the screen the last three verses. I believe it's three verses that we're going to uh, go over. And I hope that you will find this video a true blessing. I also hope that everyone is safe out there. Uh, it appears that this world has gone just, uh, just flat out Looney Tunes. And with everything that's going on, I hope that you can see that we are living on the razor's edge of our Lord's return. I can't think of anything more important that, that we could do, all of us could do, at this present time especially. I can't think of anything more important than zeroing in on, focusing on the truth of God's Word as we approach the final stage of end times prophecy and the close of our present age. We've learned a lot as we've gone through these first two epistles. Uh, it's not my intention in this video to do a review or a recap of everything that we've seen, but typically uh, any epistle that we look at uh, that was written by God the Holy Spirit through the Apostle Paul is so jam-packed full of grace and truth that it, is, that it literally staggers the imagination. I don't think that there's any way that we could, any of us could ever do justice to the text. I try my best to bring out what I believe is there and do that in an honest way, uh, deal with the te text in an honest way uh, without deceit. And I pray to God that I've done that. Uh, so as we begin these last few verses, I want you to notice, and I, I, I hope that you see this, these verses here on the screen so that you can follow me through here. The word may give. Now, we're gonna, I'm going to talk about peace. I'm going to talk about, I'm going to focus on that word, that one word, peace. Because I believe that's, it's just a fitting uh, conclusion to this entire series of studies that we've done on first and second Thessalonians. We have peace with God. You'll notice in the authorized version, may give, that's an aorist that's, that sees the action as a whole. That's always without interruption. May give. And it's an, uh, it's the, it's an active Active voice, that's God is the operator. It's what's interesting is is the optative uh, mood here. It's a uh, optative, uh, and, I, and you haven't probably, you, I doubt that you've heard me speak a lot about that. In the grammar, uh, we see it's, it's optative, now, and that's very rarely used. Paul's prayer here is expressing wishful thinking. Now, I hope that by the time we get to the end of the video, you will understand why it, how that, because I suppose the question could be asked, if we have the peace of God, if God has given us that peace and that peace has come to us through Christ, why is it that so many Christians fail to realize it. And I hope to better 
uh, shed some light, uh, at least shed some more light on on that question to make that to understand that that more clearly uh, just simply by looking at closely at the last three verses of our present text. I believe that it, context is important. I've spoken a lot about this. It, if the the rulers of the church are faithful, then it is expected that the Lord will honor their labor by producing peace among its members. And there is no way that we can separate that peace from sound biblical doctrine. Something that Christians nowadays aren't, they're not just, they're just not a huge fan of. I want you to take note of from the text that this piece is connected to, directly tied to, related to his presence. Just look at the sentence structure and you'll see. We know from other verses of Scripture, we know that we have peace with God. We know that God was fully satisfied as it concerned Christ's, what Christ did on our behalf, that He was appeased, that He was propitiated, that we have peace with God. Therefore, having been justified, that's an aorist passive participle, by faith, we have, and that is the faithfulness of God, not our faith. We have, we present, in, that's a present indicative, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, Romans 5.1. Jesus told His disciples, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. And that's a present indicative. Present tense, indicative mood, I presently, indicatively, definitely, the, the indicative mood is the mood of certainty, give you my peace. Now the word there for give is didomi. Okay? The word for grace is charis. The word for give is didomi. The word means gift. I, I gift unto you my peace. Not as the world giveth, said our Lord. And folks, any, any one of you who does, if, if you just simply do a word study on the word world, you will see that it primarily has to do with the world religious system. Not the world that does not know God. Jesus said that the world would hate you. He said that they would put you to death thinking that they were doing God a service. Does that sound like unbelievers to you? The world, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Religion, a religious system based on human merit will not give you the peace that God has gifted you through Christ. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. John 14, 27. So what we can understand from this is that it is speaking of potential peace in the experiential sense. It's like realizing something that we have. Okay? It's not trying to attain or maintain something that we do not have. We have the peace of God. We have His peace. And that, is, that includes every single one of you, every single believer on the planet, every single believer who has ever lived. 
Therefore, being having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. You cannot argue against the text. You cannot say some believers have peace with God and some don't. Every single believer has peace with God. So it is speaking of potential peace in the experiential sense, where that what is true of us positionally becomes true of us in the conditional sense, in the experiential sense. And it is what all men, all men, believer, non-believer alike, it is what every single person who's ever been born, that is what men desire the most. The most. At least I will venture to say it is what all men desire the most. It is also what we desire for others, not just for ourselves. And, but it is only realized in Jesus Christ. It is a perfect peace. Now, there's very few things in life, very th few things in the world, very few things in the universe that are perfect. We ourselves are not perfect. We know God is. And His peace, this peace, that Paul is expressing here, that he's talking about, is a perfect peace. And it, it is your possession. God has gifted that to you through Jesus Christ. The text, if you look at simply look at the text, it'll say that it is a peace. It is peace always. By all means, peace by all means in every way, okay? No wonder it's an heiress. It sees the action as a whole. It's all-encompassing. It is a peace that, that I almost feel unqualified to even speak of. It is through the grace of God the grace of God alone, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that we hope to have peace with God and to enjoy the presence of God in the experiential sense. And this, the same, you'll, you'll note that the same wish by Paul here was expressed at the close of several other epistles. I also want you to take note of the fact that this peace is seen to be in contrast to confusion. We know that God is not the author of confusion, but He is, he is the God of all peace. Uh, you see that in 1 Corinthians 14, verse 33. There is no peace, folks, in Confusion. And confusion is absolutely a result of one's ignorance of sound doctrine. You can't separate those two. I want you to take note of the fact that the Lord of Peace, that phrase, the Lord of Peace, is a title. Okay? God's got many names. One of them is that our, our, our beloved Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ, is the Lord of peace. We read, about, we, we read that in Romans chapter 15 and 16, also in 2 Corinthians chapter 13. An appropriate title in the prayer here were that the harmony of the Christian community, those believers there at the at Thessalonica, they were liable to interruption from the disorderly, as we saw, if you've been following through in, these, in this study. Those who were the, the idlers, the disorderly. Peace is often seen in the same sentence structure, okay, if, if you if you just go through 
the New Testament and look at the word peace, you'll see that it's often seen in the same sentence structure with the words righteousness and joy. And that is not your righteousness. Okay? It's always unbroken. This peace is uninterrupted. It is unbroken. It, it, it never changes. It's, it's not changing with outward circumstances from God's perspective. No matter what our circumstances are, folks, no matter what we're going through, no matter where we, we are stationed at in life, that peace of God is unbroken. God doesn't give peace and then, and then you know, well, I'm going to take it back for a little while and then maybe if they're good enough, I'll give them back peace again. That's just not the way that works. Now, I, I have no doubt that there are, there are many, many, many Christians out there who believe that's basically what, what occurs. I'm going to suggest to you that it is not. It is unbroken. It's not changing. It doesn't change with outward, with, with outward circumstances. Not from God's perspective. No matter what our circumstances, we have peace with God. And I want you to take note that even the disorderly brethren are included in this prayer by Paul. Okay? Even them. It speaks of brotherly peace and unity. Jesus is called the Prince of Peace, Isaiah chapter 9. And as God, He's called, we saw it right here in, in, in the study in Thessalonians, He's called the God of Peace in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. We saw that. And I want you to take note of the fact that peace is one of the characteristics of the singular, singular fruit of the Spirit, okay? It's not one of the fruits of the Spirit. Like, you know, each one is, is a fruit. It is one of the, the singular character. It is one of the character. Let, let, me, let me make sure that I tell you this correctly. It is one of, peace is one of the characteristics of the singular fruit of the Spirit. If one is present, folks, they're all there. If one is missing, none are there. You, try, to, try to understand where I'm coming from here. Well, uh, let's see. I want, I want, I really need patience. I really need patience. And I've got love and I've got peace, but I really need patience. I just don't have any patience. Well, folks, if you don't have any patience, if you don't have patience, you don't have love, you don't have peace, you don't have anything else. You don't have self-control. You have nothing else, okay? God doesn't, it is not I, but Christ. Christ manifest. It is not I who lives, but Christ who lives in me. He lives His life in and through our lives. He manifests Himself. He does so through the Holy Spirit, which the characteristics of the singular, the, the fruit of the Spirit, okay, manifests Christ in, its, in His fullness, not piecemeal. Okay, it's not that, well, you know, okay, I've, I've been working really hard on love and I got that one down and, well, okay, I, I, I'm really working on the, the patience thing and I got that down. But, you know, I'm still lacking in peace, you know, so I've got to work on that. I need you to understand, true Christian peace is the gift of Christ. We're told to endeavor to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. So it's related to brotherly unity. Okay? And it passes all understanding. Well, does that, 
So what does that mean, Steve? Does that mean that we can't know it? No, it's not what that text is saying. It passes all understanding. It, it sounds, I will admit, it sounds as if that's what the text is saying is that with the peace, it passes all understanding. In other, well, if, if, that's, if you want to take it that way, if that's what that means, that, that we can't understand it, well, then what's, what's, even, what's even the, what's the sense in God even mentioning it? It's not that we can't understand it. It's not that it's, it can't be understood it's not that it can't be comprehended. This peace that passes all understanding is, it reigns above all understanding. It sets itself above. The word passes, surpasses in the Greek. It, it, it elevates itself to a higher place above our understanding. That's what the text is saying. And yet, literally millions of Christians today, I would say millions, and I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll be honest, folks, I'm tempted to say billions. They either, they don't know this peace of God that has been gifted to them. A peace that's related to the God of all peace, or they're either struggling to attain or maintain this peace, Believing that it's conditional on how they live. Well, if I just if I just do everything right, if I just dot all the I's and cross all the T's, I'll have the peace of God, or I'll know the peace of God. We have peace with God solely by get it through your head once and for all, forever. We have peace with God solely by the grace of of God and Paul's desire his wish here in prayer is that this gift of peace by Christ that it governs our lives through all things and in every way all encompassing in all things in every way in all places and in all things And Paul's, or God's, farewell word is recommending a person to God. Isaiah chapter 26, 3 is interesting. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace. Keep him in perfect peace. Keep him in. Keep him in the peace that, that's already been given. Already made available. To, kept in perfect peace, the peace that, that does exist, thou wilt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee, whose mind is stayed on thee. Folks, where's your focus at? Is it on yourself or is it on Christ? I can assure you, I can guarantee you, I can promise you that you will not ever, ever understand the peace that surpasses all understanding when you focus inward on yourselves, your, your, yourself, your own, your own strength, your own capabilities. But when we set our affection, as Paul says, on things above, not on things below, because our life is hid with Christ in God, we know the peace of God that, that surpasses all understanding. Which passeth all understanding. That is, which surpasses all that people have ever conceived or imagined. I wonder how many of you out there realize just how tremendous a gift you've received. The, the expression is one that, that, that denotes that the peace imparted is of the highest possible kind. The language here is that which one would use who spoke of that which was of the highest order.
a belief that, that God is sovereign over every aspect of our lives, that we are who we are because of what Christ has done, not what we've done, provides a peace which is nowhere else known. Nowhere in the universe is a peace known like that peace. And it is God, the Holy Spirit, I've emphasized this over and over again. Paul did not pen these, he, he held the pen, but he did not author these words. These words were written by God, the Holy Spirit. It is God speaking to you and me. That nothing else will realize that peace. Woodstock didn't realize it, okay? The old uh, 60s, you know, I don't know if how many of you were alive, the old 60s uh, uh, hippies, hippie movement of the 60s, you know, that, that, you know, which has grown now. They've, they've grown up, and now, the, you know, those uh, old leftover 60s hippie rejects are the ones that's driving the fancy RVs down the highway and stopping it at, and camping at fancy campgrounds. That... That peace movement, that did not achieve this peace. Okay, no peace treaty will ever realize it. This is not to be compared, this peace, folks, it is not to be compared to that, to the hand sign, the old, hey, peace, bro, you know, peace, bro, you know, doesn't even come close. No work or service for the Lord will ever realize this peace. You could live a thousand years. You could, you could strive every day of your life, every moment of every day to live the best life that you could live as a Christian and, and, you, and you would never know this peace. This peace surpasses all understanding. Why? Why does it surpass all understanding? Because the common belief is, is that, that man must do something to produce this, the peace that he so long, longs for and desires in his heart. But he can't. He can't. He never will be able to. No, no work or service for the Lord will ever realize this, this peace that we're looking at here because such service is the result of, not the condition for that peace. I don't know how many times I've talked about putting the cart before the horse. We think that, we're, you know, in order to, to, to realize the peace of God, we've got to do something. No, we, if we realize the peace of God that we already have, then we will be doing something. It's... It produces that its own fruit, which is the life of Christ. No amount of self-confidence in our own strength or ability can replace a simple confidence in God. It, that is what Christians lack. That's, that's why they don't have peace. That's why millions don't have peace. True peace, the peace that Christ has given according to the text, is quite literally connected to, look at the text, folks, it's literally connected to His presence in our lives. We can't escape this peace any more than we can escape His presence because He's forever present. I will never leave thee nor forsake thee, He said. Our only need is to acknowledge His presence. Well, Steve, I've done that. I've acknowledged His presence, but you know, I still gotta, I still gotta stop. I don't want to hear it. You can have a false sense of peace. That's why Jesus says, "Not as the world giveth." Okay. That's why peace tends to flee when we feel that He's distant. 
He's never distant, folks. He's never distant. You know, listen, why sit in a jail cell with the door wide open? Why would you do that? Why would you do that? Why would you not... Why would you sit with your feet in shackles with the key to those shackles in your front shirt pocket? Why would you do that? That's, that's like having a million dollars in your in your in your in your pocket and not spending it. Why would you do that? Folks, he gave you this is this is the peace that God gave through Jesus Christ. You own it. It's a gift. You didn't work for it. You didn't do anything to deserve it. There's not one of you out there, not one, I don't care what you're going through. There's not one of you out there that lacks this peace. He didn't just give it to the good Christians, and well, I'm not going to give it to the bad Christians. He gave you His peace. That's what I want you to see in the, at the close of of this study. Look, I love you all. I truly do. And I hope you all are staying safe out there. Thank you for all your kind comments and messages of love and support. Until next time, this is Steve. Thanks for watching.